Hey everyone, this is Dennis, and uh, how's everybody doing? I got some more comical news from Stellantis. This company can't get out of their own way. I um, I I, I, I every time I turn around, I, I I shake my head with just the absolute cluelessness that Stellantis has run uh, what was Chrysler Corporation in North America. Uh, they have no direction, no idea what they're doing, no idea how to sell it. And we're going to I'm going to refer back to this this video here, this SEMA video I did last week on the Belvedere that they did. And it's uh, electric, so it's an appliance. So they made a Belvedere appliance and we just had the details come out and I found it on a website called The Drive, which is a really good read. Good, good. It's a good online magazine. Really good thing. And um, let's get let's dive into this uh, this uh, this embarrassment. Okay. <clears throat> Mopar built an electric Plymouth GTX Resto Mod with less power than stock. Possibly the best looking Resto Mod out there. Debatable but simply not on par with classic performance. And this is done by Hank O'Hop. And uh, Mopar is ringing in SEMA 2024 with an electromodded take on a 1967 Plymouth GTX, made to show off the potential of its E-Crate conversion kit. The E-Crate initiative raises a path forward for owners to keep their classic EMV body Mopars on the road, at least in spirit, and the team has done a remarkable job with the appearance of the rest of mod, yet with just 335 horsepower on tap and a max range of 250 miles, this particular bit build isn't likely to sway old school muscle diehards. In fact, it shouldn't sway anybody that has an intelligence above room temperature. This is a joke. Absolute utter insulting joke. Oh, and the weight, I would guarantee it weighs more than a Hemi than a Hemi GTX guaranteed with the battery packs and the electric uh, motors. Absolutely. No matter what they did, it, it's probably close to a 5,000 pound car because every last one of them are. Uh, let's continue with this really great article. The 67 GTX concept is packed with a ton of subtle but dra dramatic exterior design changes. The most notable are the widened rear wheel arches. Uh, that make the BTG Vintage Bronze Forge Magnesium Wheels and Pirelli P0 tires look right at home. Dual side mirrors, as well as a flip-up fuel cap, accent on the carbon fiber hood, and a deep front splitter. Uh, further differentiates this car from the stock GTX. Other changes include the shaved bumpers and blacked-out trim that blend beautifully with the frostbite blue paint. It is a pretty color. Uh, the Plymouth GTX package was reduced uh, for the Belvedere in 1967. It was a high-trim, high-performance spec for folks who wanted to go fast and feel classy. As such, Mopar's designers have worked their magic on this concept with a custom interior that's loaded with premium materials, accents, and features. Unlike actual road-going uh, Stellantis cars, which have the cheapest materials, uh, accents, and features of any car out there. Remember, they always go to the lowest bid. Let's continue. Uh, the basic layout isn't that far from a factory GTX. The dash and door cards look like the original equipment with some modern hardware. However, the custom seat steering wheel ugh, and center console represent major upgrades. The three link suspension and beefy will wood brakes on all four corners offer a driving experience that matches the modern styling. The scalable battery electric conversion kit powering the GTX consists of a 400 volt, 250 kilowatt electric drive module (EDM) and four battery packs, making up made up of 384 lithium ion battery cells. Each one of those battery packs has 384 little lithium ion batteries. Wow. The entire system is rated at 73 kilowatt hours. The EDM, <laughs> electric dance music, lives under the hood, sending 335 horsepower through a three to one gear reduction. <laughs> you see?
serious? Mopar didn't disclose torque figures. The designers whipped up a clean look completely with a custom cover that pays tribute to the Hellcat and Demon. Like Chevrolet's, Chevrolet, Chevrolet's, something like that. E-crate conversions, Mopar's conceptual system puts builders on the fast track to achieving a net zero car with classic muscle appearance. In this case, it swaps out E or B body Chryslers, which would include the Challenger and Cuda along with Belvedere, Coronet, and Charger. Unfortunately, it loses steam when you compare performance and weight with range of older cars. And there's the appliance heart. For starters, the 335 horsepower rivals that of the 68 to 74 barrel 383 uh, inch the cubic inch of V8 Chrysler B engine. This will annoy purists a little that the whole conversion already does. The GTS comes standard with a 375 horsepower 440 with an optional 426 Hemi 425 horsepower. Four batteries weighing 230 pounds each also put the powertrain on par at the Hemi weight with much less power. Uh, again, these are factory figures. Builders can easily pull more power out of the older engines with basic mods and a weekend's work. Not to mention, everything e easily fits right at home. The archaic operating system keep hookups really simple. Mopar also hasn't shared an estimate cost for this. While the EDM scalability, scalability may offer the potential for higher performance one, and then what we're seeing here, we can only assume that it'd be more economical to reuse old power. And that's without considering how much room is actually available for additional motors. As for range, the 440 is rated to yield 11 miles to the gallon, while the 426 Hemi promised 9 miles per gallon, according to Automobile Catalog. The GTX could carry up to 19 gallons of fuel on paper. That would mean a 440 can go as far as 209 miles on a full tank of gas, and a 426 Hemi could go 171 miles. Again, though, that's a factory rating on a factory tune. The right tune and a light foot can get more out of the mix, all without electronic fuel injection or overdrive. For example, the 440 mine 1969 Dodge Charger gets around 14 miles per gallon with dual carded four barrels on top and a stock four speed and 355 gears out the back, yielding a range of 266 miles with a similar tank size. And that's not the same airport I put together a slick looking GTX foot experiment, but it also lost the plot. The zero emission factor is hard to beat at the tailpipe, but you spend a lot less time on recharging. It's a lot less on recharging this if you would at the pump. But Dodge told the world it went all electric with the Charger Daytona to benefit performance, not just efficiency. And at a minimum, this concept needs to outperform the namesake for almost 60 years ago. It's simply easier and more affordable to get more power and go further with factory Chrysler equipment. Damn straight. So basically more electric follies from Stellantis with a joke. Now, what the writer doesn't put in there is that you can put two five-gallon gas tanks in the trunk, and actually you can keep driving another, you know, 120, 130 miles with the car if you just put more gas in it. That it takes literally three minutes to put the gas in. Um, uh, yeah. So this is this is once again an absolute. This is a joke. Uh, as all the electric stuff is, it's a joke. Uh, Ford. I mean, for a comparison to not, I'm, I'm going to do a comparison to, to totally make this a mockery. Uh, Ford. Just lost another billion dollars on the Mustang Mach-E and Ford F-150 Lightning last quarter. That's how bad electric appliances are for business. They are expensive to build, expensive to maintain, expensive to keep. And when they are used up, they pollute like nothing else. Lithium ion is filthy to take out of the ground. It's filthy to process and it's filthy to get rid of. It is not a clean process. You waste a lot of water. I don't know how, how this is green or how it's zero, zero net when you waste a lot of groundwater, which is more precious, more precious than gasoline, more precious than coal water. Water is the most precious thing we have because without it, there's no life. 
and this is absolutely in, insane. And, and Chrysler Corporation in North America looks dead. I mean, you this is this is insane. This is stupid. So let's compare this. I just picked what somebody could do with a 67 Belvedere. If they wanted something a little more reliable than the older engine, kind of fuel injection and do all the fun stuff, because Holly makes a complete bolt in for this. You don't have to use more for performances. She's, you can go out and get a 392 Hemi, modern. Modern Hemi from 2011 to current, or 2024, uh, 2023. Still, you have many years to pull them, and there's plenty of them that got wrecked. There's engines everywhere. You can get from 470 to 485 horsepower right out of the bag with no modifications. These engines could probably very easily, easily 600 horsepower without without killing anything, without without absolutely making the engine undrivable. Easily 600 horsepower. And they have, you know, near five, 475 foot pounds of torque, get that away over 500. That's an animal. This is an animal. And this bolts right in. And guess what? You can drive down to your local gas station and fill this thing up. Absolutely just fill this up. And this, these, you could buy these engines, what, for like eight grand? I mean, they're engine and transmission. You could buy this stuff from Holly. What is it, like three, four grand? I mean, under $20,000, you could have this entire powertrain put into your, your old, Chrysler muscle car and you'll have something that will kick ass as they say and get you'll get 20 something miles to the gallon with it and you'll beat that electric thing all day long and it will also last longer it, I mean this is not even this is this is this is absolute and utter insanity at this point the, the truly there's there's no there's not any type of thought to what the market wants at Stellantis now. They are just building stuff to please governments to get money from them. Ford is basically, Ford is probably the most intelligent company that is based in North America or in North America right now. They are literally done. They, they are trying to run away from electric cars and electric trucks. The appliances are killing them. And they have all sorts of good technology to make gas engines work very well and Stellantis blowing up and not replacing the Hemis with something that is usable for the public is 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 unthinkably stupid. And, and I I am just floored that this example is such an embarrassment. It actually is doesn't even compare to any of the Teslas that are out there. Forget about the gas engines. The Teslas would run a circle around that. I mean, you know, that's an appliance that is perfected if, as much as it can be. I mean, it's still a disposable, it's still a disposable uh, item, just like a toaster. But it still has a, still a hell of a lot faster, more fun than that Belvedere. Which, I mean, with all that weight and that amount of horsepower, you're looking at, what, 15, 15 second quarter mile, 335 and almost 5,000 pounds. I mean, it's like taking a sea body down the track. You know, 15s, 16 seconds. I mean, you're talking pretty slow. You're talking really slow, actually. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on this um, joke. And and thank you to Drive for having that article. It's absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I want to hear your comments on this because I am I I am I, I am flabbergasted every time I I turn around and look at what Chrysler's doing. So I hope you got something from this. If you did, you know, do those things that shows below. And uh, as always, you know, if you have a classic old car or something fun to drive, take it out. You'll make someone's day and maybe even your own. And I will catch you very soon.